bringing our blue economy research together for impact, uh, we have uh, Jody Kunch from Ali Ocean Synthesis Leader Blue Economy. Jody brings a wealth of experience uh, leading collaborative projects from across the global seafood industry. Her career has focused on bringing together stakeholders to develop economically viable solutions to the sector's urgent environmental, social and climate related challenges. Her work has spanned four continents and hundreds of marine farms, fishing vessels, seafood factories and businesses. Jody has diverse experience across both public and private sectors with technical expertise in environmental standards and impact measurement. Let's welcome to the stage Jody. Um, so I've been involved in the blue economy synthesis work um, for about the last year with the challenge. And the focus on that is really how do we translate these eight and a half years of knowledge and research into tangible outcomes? And really, what can we do to demonstrate and stimulate and support an Aotearoa-centric blue economy growth? And for us as a challenge, we also want to be thinking about what are we doing to set that trajectory to continue long after we are here? We've got about 16 months to do that, so it's a big ask. Um, and we've already heard a lot today about what a blue economy is and thinking about that ambition that weaves together rich economic potential with the health of our people and the resilience of the ecosystem that we rely upon. But before I get into the how we think we can start working with it. I want to go back and reflect a little bit on the why, because we've touched on it a little bit um, in various ways already. But when we start thinking about impact, that connection to our why helps us to understand that journey into the what and the how. Because often when we think about economy in New Zealand, that's what we think about. Um, our co economy has been underpinned largely by land-based um, economic development. We hear that often around agriculture as the backbone um, of New Zealand's economy. But the reality is that this is our Aotearoa. That one. And that we have been this very um, maritime based blue economy for a very long time. 96% of our territory is at sea. It's 15 times larger than our land mass. We're the fourth largest marina state in the world. We've got more biodiversity here than all the EU combined, more than a thousand species of seaweed. We go from some traffic, sub Antarctic. It's a big and awesome space with a heck of a lot of opportunity. And that we of all countries in the world should be looking to our ocean to solve some of our biggest challenges, food security, national security, climate solutions, and also to underpin that economic backbone. So even the work of the OECD and the UN have highlighted the ocean's promise of immense resource wealth and the great potential for boosting economic growth, jobs, innovation here and around the world. And um, even in those um, forums, you hear about the ocean being referred to as the next great economic frontier. However, while the potential of that ocean to help us with some of those biggest challenges and provides those biggest opportunities, it is very real. We know that our oceans are already under stress. We've talked about things like pollution and runoff, overexploitation, climate, biodiversity. And so realizing that full potential of our huge ocean estate of which we are kaitiaki of is going to demand responsible and sustainable and inclusive economic growth. And that's where the blue economy becomes so important to all of us as Kiwis. I'm not good at this part, clearly not the technical expert here. That's why, because I need a green button, not a white one. Um, what I love most about the work that I get to do is the diversity um, of the blue economy and how um, there's so many ways that we can work with and for our precious Moana. So if we just look right at the cutting edge of that in things like ocean resources and the innovative blue tech and ocean observation, a lot of the work that you do is core to our blue economy. 
And as we have a, you know, and that's like everything from understanding and protecting our marine life and its ecosystems. If we look at the growing population, we're going to have another 2 billion people in the next 20 years. The food security of fisheries and aquaculture comes in. Marine resources provide essential other needs, including through health and blue biotech sector. We undoubtedly have urgent demands in alternative energy, so we bring in um, our blue renewables. And the off ocean off also has all of those opportunities we talked about at the very beginning with Nick around the coastal and marine tourism. And every single one of those activities has impacts on our marine environment, and that's the big pit bit around the ocean health and its biodiversity that create the need for environmental protection and restoration. That's what Sherisel was talking about and the huge economic potential of those investments. Um, I also want to highlight things that often get missed in around the blue economy, which is around even shipbuilding and retrofits, engineering, shipping, and ports. Everything that we do on and with the sea requires our accessibility to it. Those things also have impacts. And so there's a lot of work in the blue economy going into um, how we reduce the impact of um, and our, um, uh, yeah, how we reduce our impact into non polluting vessels and structures, um, and also how we are starting to move about people and goods across the ocean. So, here in New Zealand, it's over 95% of our goods and services as an export nation move by vessel. There's a big impact on that and a huge opportunity as well. And the last one, um, while I'm watching the clock, is uh, our land and sea are connected. There's a lot of work on what we do on land that is really, really important to underpinning the success of our blue economy. Um, and we are all, Julie and I like this picture quite a lot, clearly. Um, I think it's the fourth time it's up. But we're all very aware of the imperfections in our current ocean activities and systems and that we simply can't turn them off in order to start a blue economy. So we've brought in a lot of conversation today around transitioning. Um, and if you forgive the really bad analogy, I was trying to explain to a friend recently what transitioning in an economy might be like. And I said, it's like going to the black caps and telling them to stop playing cricket and to start playing rugby and expecting them to perform like the all blacks. Because what we need to do is to really shift then coaching and training. There's going to possibly be a shift in our players and also probably some work that we need to do on the pitch. And it's that perspective that we're bringing in to what we're doing in the synthesis work here at the challenge. Julie's talked a little bit um, around the principles and the greatest impact we see here is guiding the, um, the financial and operational level decision making within businesses. So without being prescriptive, is how do we start to provide a trajectory that brings in all these different moving parts on a shared ambition? These principles also um, underpin other aspects of the strand as well. Um, so the second activity is centered around sustainability reporting. This is another piece of work that Sherisela um, and the team at Avirostrat are working really um, are, are leading for us. And the aims of this are to identify the marine sustainability measures um, that can be incorporated into businesses' reporting initiatives. And so it's everything from, and we saw that triangle earlier, around sustainability reporting, transparency initiatives, into TCFD and TNFD. Um, and the impact for this is to increase what we would call readiness, or how prepared we are as businesses and financial sectors to address the ecosystem impacts in terms of both um, risk and value creation. So researchers here are going to be focused on identifying tools that can help us um, measure, assess, and respond to those pressures. and. Um, in particular, focusing on translating the blue economy principles into key metrics. Not that those metrics are going to be able to tell us anything, but those metrics help us identify key approaches as to how we can think about the success of um, in that transition for a blue economy. Um, the other key part about that um, research is that there are case studies working in partnership with existing businesses and financial entities um, to experiment on how we build that into business practices. And that's going to then be available for other businesses to see where the relevant components are and have, again, that example or the exemplary um, to be able to learn from. 
Uh, the third piece of this is building a blue economy in place, which aims to demonstrate all the different ways in which we here in Aotearoa are starting to stimulate and support blue economy growth. Um, and this is being led by Bill K. Blake of New Zealand Institute of Economic Research. Um, and they as well be working alongside partners both that have been active within the challenge already and also new end users, looking at um, how to connect in the insights from across the challenge, so not just the economic research that's been done, but also from EBM and Te Aumori, Māori, um, and bringing that into, um, into these partnerships to identify what we're calling scalable and replicable opportunities. So how can we find those key things when we're developing or we're starting um, blue economy activities to say, think about these things equally, what are going to be the things to avoid? Um, and we can do that best by working in practice with what's happening here at home. Um, the first case study has been identified um, with Kotahi Tangamote Taio Alliance in Tetauihu. Um, and I think there's a couple more that are yet to be confirmed. Okay. Um, the I, I think I covered everything there. Um, the final piece of work is really about bringing this research from the challenge into commercial sectors. And the challenge has been very well placed so far in generating research outputs with co-development partners and end users. But where um, we haven't been as influential is inside the financial and economic arenas. And probably at the speed and scale that we feel is necessary to ensure impact with the remaining resource constraints of the challenge, namely time. And so um, we have a fourth activity that's um, deliberately designed to dovetail research as it comes out of the challenge. So you're hearing about a lot of projects that are getting close to the end of their, um, or close to finishing up. We also have these synthesis pieces that are coming together. And Chris is going to be talking about um, more synthesis um, coming on Friday. And as that stuff comes out, we want to be able to have an opportunity to embed that directly into the commercial and financial sectors. And so the challenge is going to be partnering with Moana Nui, which is the new blue economy cluster, um, to utilize their collaborative operational model in order to um, embed blue economy principles into the organizational strategy, but also um, to utilize those collaborations to um, create outputs, I guess, and to demonstrate the practical steps for um, commercial sectors to take up. So that includes things like training on the um, uh, adoption of the sustainability reporting metrics um, and designing impact projects that directly take those replicable and scalable learnings into business and financial sectors in the period of time that we have available. And these, none of these activities are going to solve all of the challenges, all of the aspects around a blue economy. So what we're trying to do is really support and catalyze um, that transition to a blue economy for New Zealand and generate enough momentum that that will continue within that private sector across the research community after the life of the challenge. I'm only yellow, how am I doing? Um, but let me, uh, so I'll stop there. And I also wanted to highlight that um, we have Bill K. Blake here from NZIER, Chair Asella is here from Virostrat, Catherine's here um, with Chair Moana and myself. So please do ask more detail about the activities that they're leading um, over the breaks, but also if there are things that you're working on within your research that you feel we could be bringing on board or you see other opportunities for collaboration and partnership, please do come and tap any one of us. Um, we're really keen to bring in as much of that together as we can. Kia ora. <laughs>